Well, we have G.D. Johnson joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to look through the pages of national dailies. We call it Off the Press. G.D., thank you for joining us. Good morning, Messi, and good morning to our listeners all over the world. The all right. all right. Same here. Travelers, residents stranded as flood grounds Lokoja. That's boldly written. And north cut off from the south. Economic activities stalled. Oil marketers blame fuel scarcity on situation. FRC advises commuters to take alternative routes. Suleja, Bida, Mokwa. Road for southwest Nasarawa. Utupo access for southeast travelers. Uh, you know, it's more like an alternative suggestion. Is is a serious one. We understand that the issue of flooding is a national crisis, but this is very critical because of the connection and the link, you know, between a, a certain region of the country. That's the north, northern part of the country, and the southern part of the country. So you have the northern part and the southern part. It calls for, you know, a serious concern because it might just be a divider, right? If people cannot move freely and connect uh, from one part to another, then that's a big problem. Uh, well, that's it on uh, the leadership, but just before we move away, we'll fight for a full return of $5 billion, a batch of loot. That's what the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, is quoted to say. And again, you find man condemns attack. Kogi threatens to recover cement company. After 12 days in London, Tunubu returns to Nigeria. It's also another one you find. And 2023, campaign finance. INEC invokes 50,000 naira donation limit. So, I mean, the limit that should be given to any party, 50,000 naira. Well, that's it. This morning on the leadership, we move away quickly and we have the nation newspaper in front. Buhari to military replicate northeast Eight, uh, nationwide and president visits rescued train passengers train service on abuja kaduna route returns soon i'm happy to be back says uh, the flag bearer of the all progressive congress bola tunubu lai mohammed pdp clash over corruption claim <laughs> 2023 budget reps okays uh, 8.43 trillion naira new borrowing plan and just before we move away from the nation, you have Ethiopia suspends visa on arrival policy. Rivers Assembly deletes an ex-governor. Find out who we're talking about. Ngigi accuses Jaga of bias in federal government and asks to face off. Quite interesting issues right there on the nation. We have the punch. PDP crisis. Aggrieved governor's report article to BOT lists peace conditions. Ex-vice president... On post-primary promise to WK, uh, London deal, that's what the source is quoted to say. WK moves against Atiku's ally and deletes an ex-governor. Atiku will shock Nigerians, win with 7 million votes margin. Are you the chairman of the party is making a boast? <laughs> of course. It's just natural that that should happen. Federal government reviews the real security and Buhari meets uh, freed hostages. Court rules on ASU's appeal out of court settlements failed. Budgets. Reps justify 8.4 trillion naira borrowing, 6.3 trillion naira debt servicing. That's uh, in 2023. 82-year-old French writer wins a Nobel Prize in Literature and CBN. There's bosses over 2 trillion naira to 426 industries. And Kogi claims uh, the plant ownership as Dangote, man kicks. Again, you find excitement as uh, Bola Tunubu returns from the United Kingdom and prepares for campaign. Ogun tanker chased by miscrunt explodes, three killed, 12 vehicles burnt. Abuja petrol scarcity persists as federal government blames the Kogi flood. <laughs> so there's a lot that's going on.
or really saddening. And we turn attention to the Nigerian Tribune uh, quickly before uh, we call it a wrap here and have G.D. Johnson share his thoughts. On the Nigerian Tribune, twists and turns in Wiki's rivers. Assembly de-recognizes an ex-governor, others him to refund 696.5 million within seven days, governor to assent document today, and government withdraws criminal charge against Amechi and Cole, others. Why I want to be Alafin at 84, uh, find out who's talking about. It's an archbishop, if you say. 14 days after leaving for the United Kingdom, uh, Bola Tunubu returns to Nigeria. 11 banks shortlisted to disburse $350 million. Again, 2023 budget estimate reps approves 19.76 trillion naira total expenditure, 8.437 trillion new borrowings, and reduce uh, 11.3 trillion fiscal deficit to 10.6 trillion naira. Approves 1.7 trillion naira fuel subsidy against Senate's 3.6. Six trillion naira. I mean, there's a lot right here. Nigeria has received over 2,000 military fighting equipment in seven years. That's what Buhari is quoted to say. Abachasai phoned $5 billion to West, he says. And you, youths protest in Ibadan over EFCC arrest is something that uh, made the rounds yesterday. Federal government asked for consultation for out of court settlement fails. And courts rule on ASU's application today, especially when they are confronting the new faction or new union that has been created. To die to a vehicle's bond as tanker crashes in Ogun State. The headlines are, you know, a bit to the side and to the other side. Not totally, uh, you know, happy headlines or stories, if you like to say, but a bit of everything. But we have G.D. Johnson join us straight up to him. G.D., thank you so much for being part of the show. So let's start off with the issue of uh, the flooding in Kogi State. I mean, it's a lot that's going on from the pictures, uh, the videos, the reports, and the feelers that we're getting. What are your thoughts, really? Do you think that this is a man-made situation or it's a natural disaster? It's something you should expect. And the government will have taken a different step towards um, cooking the food. Um, these issues are perennial issues. There are periods and time in the year that you have every rainfall. And they have been forecast with respect to every rainfall. So, what would have expected agencies of federal government and agencies of state government? And even the local government to have taken one or two steps to ensure that lives and property are protected, free passage are also provided for, for commuters, both for, both for partners and business and opportunities. Now you have um, Lokoja doing the conference where River Niger and River Benin there. So if you expect and you keep steps towards addressing this. But what did we do? We only see the governor dancing on social media and doing other things other than taking government. So as far as I'm concerned, God has really been kind to us in, in Nigeria, particularly and in Africa. Just imagine if you experience what Florida experienced. Of in, in America experience in Asia during the monsoon season, I'm not too sure a lot of people will survive. Because we don't have we don't know how to respond to emergency and we don't know how to respond to natural disasters that have been predicted or forecasted ahead of time. I can't take that. Get to the elections away from that because uh, it would be a uh, crux of our conversation as we proceed on the leadership newspaper, the 2023 campaign, talking about donations, uh, financial contribution or funding 
for party. The INEC has invoked 50,000 hour donation as a limit. What are your thoughts on it? 50,000 hour as a limit for donation. Do you think that uh, that's enough? Well, um, is it, is it, is it? Can you hear us, please? Unfortunately, we have uh, again been disconnected. Some disconnection with GD. We're hoping that we're able to have a connection with him and we continue with our thoughts. GD, Jassi, can you hear us? I okay. can hear you. All right, so go ahead with your thoughts. Well, uh, this is where I, like, I say that it invokes. I think there is a provision in the electoral act with respect to um, with respect to the minimum and maximum donation that can be made by an individual for a campaign. But I think I like, needs to collaborate with the banks. I like, needs to collaborate. This is where ESG should be more much more effective, other than um, focusing more on parading. Um, Nigerian youth that are engaged in in four and nine and fraud. I'm not saying they should take their eyes off the ball with that. They should do that. But much more attention should be paid to people depicting our national resources. And this is where there should be an interagency collaboration. The CBN with the commercial banks plus ESCC and INEC, they should work together in ensuring that there's a compliance with this provisions of the law that limit the certain amount of money that um, an individual could, co could contribute to, to, to as donations to a political party. And um, also, I next should also ensure that they look into the books. I think that part of what should form the basis of the election campaign is that the, 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 the auditing of, of political parties' account. You recall last week we were talking Two weeks ago, we were talking about money that were that were about money that some members of the National Working Committee of PDP wanted to return because it was it was approved for them by by the national chairman. So nobody looks into the accounts of the political party are not properly audited. If you don't properly audit the accounts, how would you be able to ensure that they comply with the provisions of the law with respect to uh, campaign finance campaign finance regulation? So there should be an interagency. It's important that we don't allow money to influence our election. And we must teach this so that money back don't like that. But how do you ensure that we're doing the primaries? Dollars are being shared left, right, and center. So I, I don't know. I think it should start from the primary itself. It should also start from the nomination itself. Where should someone be paying 25 million, 100 million? To become to become a governor or a president, these are areas in which INEC needs to put. If you don't have money, you can't take nomination to run for any party. So it, it should it should it should not be limited towards the main election alone. It should start even from the process of picking the candidate, so that we can sanitize the process and we can allow people that have integrity but that do not have the resources, do not have money back supporting them to win an election. And that that's the goal and that's the purpose. All right, then. But, but how do you think that INEC will be able to monitor this and ensure compliance? I mean, so if you say that there's a limitation to how much that, that can be donated, I don't know if that's for an individual or, uh, you know, for a group, right? But what's the... I, I'm, uh, sure that must, I'm sure that must be for an individual. How can INEC do that? It's for INEC to do its oversight function. INEC has oversight function in looking into the books of the political party. And INEC cannot do this alone. INEC must work with other agencies of government. You have other agencies of government that INEC needs to collaborate. That's why you have inter-agency dependence. For example, INEC can work with NBC, INEC, which controls the broadcast media, can work with Lupin, um, which controls the print media, and then work with EFCC, ICPC, Central Bank, 
to ensure that there is the books, the resources of funding for this political party are, are, are investigated. There's no way if you have this inter, inter, interagency dependence and interagency collaboration that the political parties will go scot free, spending money beyond what is approved or what is allowed by 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 the electoral elect, by the electoral laws in Nigeria, and that is the best way to do it. IMEC on its own cannot do it. IMEC we need to work, but the challenge we have in Nigeria is that we don't have interagency collaboration and cooperation. You see, it is during the day of the election that you see ESCC agents parading left, right, and center looking for vote buying. Now you arrest. People that are actually giving the money and collecting the money on the field. Who are those that are responsible for bringing out the money in the first instance? Where are the sources of this fund? Who are those behind it? You will not see. It's just buried one or two or three or four, four people after that election. Not a single one will be executed. They will be released. Mm. All right. So let's look at the PDP issue and, uh, you know, the crisis in the party now. And, uh, uh, the punch says that aggrieved governors have reported Atiku to the BOT and they have, list, uh, they have a list of peace conditions now for a party that is a major opposition party in the country. Do you think that they should have been able to get over, you know, gotten over the stage of uh, all of the confusion that's going on in the party? You no, know, the, the challenge of PDP, which is also the duty of PDP, if you check from the section, is about um, um, no single individual or groups of individuals have absolute control over that party. If you check the history, it's an advantage and at the same time it's a disadvantage. Uh, it's a party that you have all command and all journal. So that's always, you have always seen this type of, <clears throat> you recall even the president of our Sanjot administration in 2003, when he was running for the election, uh, allegedly it was, it was allegedly reported that um, some of the governors were not going to, were not going with him. Some of the governors were going with his deputy. That is speaking president, not to talk of uh, the party not having a president now. I'm sure some of these issues will be resolved, and if the issues are not resolved, the party will have itself to be blamed when it comes to, because there's no bed that can fly with one of its doing. However, as you're having that on one hand, you see the national chairman of the party saying boldly that um, they are going to win with 7.7 7 million plus votes for the election. I don't know where he's getting that because from whether he has already written the result of the election um, on a sheet of paper that he wants to declare for himself, or whether it's, 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 it's living in a different world from, from ours. The, vote, the first vote has not been cast, and then you are coming up with, with the idea that with, with, with the figure that uh, you imagine which you, you used to win. The national chairman should be talking about how to resolve the crisis within his party, which has taken a new twist and turn in River State. You see that then the former governor of River State, who happens to be an ally uh, of uh, Atiku Abaka, has been delisted as as a former governor of River State by the by the State House of Assembly, and as reported, we is going to sign the instrument confirming that today. And then we also have a situation that is also reported that the charges against Ami Chikol and the rest of them have been withdrawn. Yes. By, by by the River State government. So I've told you to grab your popcorn. Grab your popcorn, look for a bucket of chicken and then ice cream and sit by the ringside and enjoy the drama. We have not seen last week we were talking about the purported letter from the national chairman of the APC and some members of the National Working Committee to their presidential candidate, which was vehemently denied. But some of the issues that were raised, you know, exist in the public domain. So just don't be ready to enjoy the political drama. It's, it's, it's the political drama season. Let's catch our cruise. Mm. Well, 
And just before, uh, you know, we call it a wrap on off the press this morning, let's take a quick look at the budget. I mean, it's expected that there will be a presentation of that budget today being Friday, the 7th of October, 2022. But however, uh, the reps have approved 19.76 trillion naira as total expenditure and 8.437 trillion naira new borrowings. Uh, you know, you also have more like reduction from 11.3 trillion naira fiscal deficit to 10.3 trillion naira. Some people say that that's a good thing. An approval of 1.7 trillion naira fuel subsidy against the Senate's 3.6 trillion naira. Uh, G.D. Johnson, quickly share your thoughts on this one. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's not just about the budget presentation. It's about the monitoring and tracking. What was the performance of the budget for 2022? I know we are talking about the budget performance of 2023. We don't have a situation of tracking and monitoring funds that are that that are appropriated for a financial year. We also we always see these figures, and government will come and bandy these figures. To what extent? To what percentage? How many uh, percentage? Is it 60 percent? Did we uh, did we execute this? 2022 budget to 60% or 70% or 80% um, compliance with what was stated in the bill that was uh, that was that was passed by the National Assembly and assented to by the president. As far as I'm concerned, does it reflect on the cost of living and the standard of living of an average Nigerian? It's not about those reductions. It's not about those figures. The budget should be able to reflect. On the cost of living and the standard of living on Avenue and there. That's why we begin to talk about budget. And I think moving forward, when next government comes into power, the media should focus more on budget tracking, budget monitoring, to ensure that they are compliant with the, 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 the appropriation deal. Once it is passed and assented, it's an act of the parliament. So if you don't comply with the act of the parliament, it's an impeachable offense. It's an impeachable offense. So we must ensure that the instrumentality of the states are used to ensure compliance with whatever provisions you have made in the appropriation bill that is approved as an assented to by the president after the passage by the National Assembly. That that that's what I'm interested. What we have been seeing, Messi, is just figures, 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 figures. Figures that does not have any effect on the lifestyle of an average Nigerian. Well, Jide Johnson, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate yeah. your thoughts this morning on the front pages Hello. of our national dailies. We look forward it's to sharing to more of it on thank Friday. You. That's next week. Well, thank you once again for joining us uh, this morning on the show. We take a break, but, but just before that break, let's quickly tell you what happened today in history been the seventh day in October. Stay with us.